What's up, everybody? Kevin Fabrizi here to talk sports with you today. Uh, just getting into the second round of the NBA playoffs last night was a big game seven. Uh, as many of you guys know, I'm a huge Spurs fan. Um, so definitely a rough game. Uh, Spurs did not come out shooting shooting the ball well in the first half. I think it shot something like 24%. Um, climbed back late after being down 17 in the third quarter, but ultimately ended up losing to the Denver Nuggets. And I, I will say as a Spurs fan, I, I had high hopes. I really thought that they could um, win this series and have a chance to maybe make it to the Western Conference Finals. They had a, a really good draw in the bracket, not having to face Houston or Golden State until potentially the, the Western Conference Finals. And it seemed like there was a chance for this team to 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 make a run uh, this playoffs. But I think what we found out in the end is that this all along was a very flawed team. Uh, I mean, if you, if you look at the roster, you have a, a, a bunch of young players, and you, you have a lot of players that are only good on one side of the ball. I mean, classic classic examples. DeMar DeRozan is a great offensive player, but he's just not a great defensive player. That's just not something he's fine-tuned throughout his career. And on the flip side, you have you know a good defensive player such as um, – Yaka Pirtle, but maybe not the most skilled offensively. And then you have great shooters off the bench and Marco Bellinelli and Patty Mills, but can be, quite frankly, a liability on defense. And so I, I think it's really a testament to how great of a job Popovich has done this year to get this team this far. They were lost their starting point guard before the regular season even started. I mean, think about that. That's a huge loss for any team. And it, yes, I know everyone wants to point to they have two All NBA players and Demar Derozan and Marcus Aldridge, but to to be able to recover from losing your starting point guard, I mean that's a big deal. The starting point guard Dejounte was a second team All Defense. He was the head of the snake on the defensive side, wreaking havoc left and right. And yes, you can point to Derek White's emergence, kind of replacing Murray, so to speak, in Murray's production. But many of you might forget is Derek White was pretty bad to start the season. I mean, up until December, he was hardly even playable. I mean, Pop had him coming off the bench. He was being net negative when he was playing. And then all of a sudden, it kind of clicked. And then when it clicked, the whole team clicked. They went through stretch where they're one of the best teams in the league over the course of like an 18-game stretch. And then they went through some peaks and valleys, Pop and Saul trade. Eventually, it all comes out in the wash to make it to the playoffs. But the amount of growth that we've seen from this team – it is remarkable. I mean, there there was a point where they were eleven and fourteen at the beginning of the year, and it looked like maybe the Spurs' run is over. The Spurs' era, their greatness, finally they've reached a point where it's no longer continuing. Look, as flawed a team as they were, they just pushed the second seed in the West to a game seven, and quite frankly, should have won that game, and should have won the series. In game two, they blew two nineteen point leads. In game seven. They had one of the worst shooting performances in history and lost by four points. I mean, that's incredible. And you add to that, they get back to John T. Murray uh, this summer, and they have two first-round draft picks. And so, yes, Spurs fan, I, I know that was a rough game last night. I know, look, I'm with you. That, that was tough. It was tough to see the team go out like that, not being able to hit a shot in the first half. But isn't that a testament to the Spurs to – they haven't been great defensively all year, but they competed and they held Denver to 90 points in a Game 7. That's remarkable. A Game 7 on the road. This team's been awful on the road all year. And they very nearly could have won three different road games in this series. The one Game 1, could have won Game 2, and could have won Game 7. That's incredible. They fought. They clawed. And yes, DeMar DeRozan's flawed. And then the offense kind of was a little clunky when you have all the mid-range shooters and Three-point shooters weren't getting any space, and look, I mean, that happens. It, we knew from the beginning this was going to be a flawed team. As soon as you trade Kawhi Leonard, one of the premier players in the league, and get back to DeMar DeRozan, who, for how, however great he is, is no Kawhi Leonard, there was always going to be flaws. The, you lose a 3 knee specialist in Danny Green in the trade. <laughs> look, really didn't have any great two-way players on this team. I mean, LaMarcus Aldridge is a, good, is a decent defender, good offensively. Derek White is a really good defender and okay offensively. I mean, he had, of course, the explosion in Game 3 where he goes for 36. But, I mean, he hasn't been a big scorer all year. 
And the fit's always been a little clunky between Aldridge and DeRozan, but, you know, they're starting to figure it out. Um, but that's what I'm here to say. Look, you got to be optimistic. This team is going to add to back to Jonte Murray, and I think the fit is going to be tough. Look, you're talking about potentially rolling out a starting lineup next year with practically no shooters. DeJounte Murray at point guard, Derek White at shooting guard, DeRozan at small forward, Aldridge at the four, and Jakob Pertl at the five. That's the starting lineup. They're going to have issues offensively. I mean, putting putting up mildly, there's going to be no spacing. Unless DeJounte Murray's really figured out that jump shot and Derek White hones his craft this summer making threes, that's going to be rough. But, I mean, I, I think there are ways to work around this. Um, I, I've heard it talked about in the past, having Derek White slide into kind of that Manu Ginobili role off the bench, you know, playing close to 30 minutes, but maybe not starting every game. And then maybe have Brent Forbes start to have the shooting, or instead of starting Yaka Pirtle, have, move Aldridge back to the bench and have Davis Breton start. And plus, remember, they're going to have two first-round picks next year. And they're basically de facto rookie. They're going to get Lonnie Walker. Lonnie Walker hardly played this year, and I mean, that's kind of Pop's go-to. He doesn't play these guys in year one. He wants them to give them the chance to develop, and Lonnie Walker, I think, is 19-20, young kid. Um, basically, it's going to be his rookie year next year, and I think that that's big for, for the squad. And um, I mean, you're getting an infusion of four players, potentially. I mean, realistically, the, the rookies probably in the, this coming draft aren't going to make a huge impact. Uh, probably will spend a lot of time in the G League like Lonnie, like DeJounte, and like Derek before for them. But DeJounte Murray was a second-team all-defense last year. And, and lest we forget how good he looked last summer and, and what he can do defensively, if you just imagine with me for a second, a defensive backcourt with Derek White and DeJounte Murray, I mean, that's going to be the best defensive backcourt in the league. Might have some issues scoring, but they're both 6'4", 6'5", can switch. And wreak havoc. Derek White had a game where he had six blocks. Blocked Trayon five times in that game. DeJounte Murray is a thief. Stealing balls left and right. He's great defensively getting blocks. Contesting shots. Guarding the pick and roll. And that's going to be a tough duo to score upon. And, like, DeMar is never going to be mistaken for an all-world NBA defender. But he's gotten better. He's learned to compete. And another offseason in the program. Understanding what he needs to do on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, he's got the athleticism to be a good defender. It's just a matter of training that mind to, to get there. And look, I mean, maybe we're not going to have another Spurs dynasty, but the rest of the West is going to get weaker. There's rumors that Kevin Durant's going to go to the Knicks or he's going to go to the Clippers, and all of a sudden maybe that Golden State mega dynasty is no longer as great as uh, it once was, and now we're back to more of NBA norm. There's more parity, and who knows? Maybe... This team figures it out, and they go on a run into the next playoffs. I think there's a definite need for shooting, and maybe adding another 3 and D guy somehow, some way. Um, I mean, they have the middle-level exception available this summer, where most likely what's going to happen is the Spurs are going to operate over the cap. And so what that means is they have access to the full middle-level exception, which I believe is somewhere around $9 million. And maybe you can use that to get a 3 and D guy um, to, to come in and put in the starting lineup, or come off the bench. Most likely to re-sign Rudy Gay. Probably not going to see a whole lot of wholesale changes to this roster. I heard it be rumored that, you know, potentially shopping one of the guards to, you know, open up some of the playing time for Lonnie Walker and making sure DeJounte gets his minutes and stuff. Because kind of a long jam. You have Patty, Bryn, um, Marco, uh, Derek, DeJounte, and DeMar, which is a crowded backcourt, to say the least. But, I mean, Pop will figure it out. They might have to move one of those guys because you can't play them all at once but um i think there's a lot of room for improvement here and like i mean if you told me at the beginning of the year when, when they were 11 and 14 that they pushed denver to who ended up being the uh, number two team in the west to a seventh game on denver's home floor and almost winning it i mean now we're taking that in a heartbeat look we were, we were worried about this team making the playoffs after Dejounte went down i mean i think all realistic expectations went out the window once once murray towards ACL in the preseason and um, you know it's been it's been a ride that's for sure I mean, we've had a lot of ups and lots of downs but I mean a testament to Pop and what he's been able to accomplish and the developmental staff of the Spurs to be able to to get these guys Brent Forbes playing like he belongs I mean he's dropped 19 points in a game seven 
competing left and right. His defense has improved drastically since when he came into the league. Derek White is all of a sudden one of the better defenders in the NBA. Um, he shrank a little bit in games four through seven of the series, but I mean that's to be expected. The guy's basically a rookie. I mean, yes, he's 24, but he didn't really play in the NBA last year. This was basically his rookie season, and he drops 36 in a game three, and was virtually unstoppable in that game. And look, if the Spurs keep developing players like this, they're gonna be fine for a long time. Um, and yes. This year was heartbreaking. It was rough to, it's always rough to lose in game seven. But, I mean, realistically, were they going to win the title? Probably not. But you got seven games for the young guys to get more playoff experience, understand what it takes to win. Yaka Pirtle's young. Derek White, Brent Forbes, DeJounte Murray, Lonnie Walker. This future is going to be bright for this, ball squad, or this squad. But keep in mind, DeMar DeRozan's just 29. Um, not quite the old Spurs. Um, that we're used to, we're the oldest team in the league, and they've got some young talent that I think is coming up, and look, can be a contender next year again. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how everything fits together, but can you really second-guess Pop anymore? I mean, he's just turned water into wine this year with this team, and um, that's just a testament to the, the great organization there and the great development staff that Pop and, and, his, and the club have put together. Uh, but I hope you guys have enjoyed the Spurs season. I know it was rough seeing them go down last night. Definitely hurt my heart. Uh, of course, I'm a big Spurs fan. But, uh, if, look, the future's bright. And two first-round picks next year, DeJounte Murray. 2019 and on, I like this team's chances. Thanks, guys.